Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how to make a ResNet architecture in TensorFlow from scratch. It's a little bit confusing and there's some really cool TensorFlow tricks that is important to be able to do if you want to make complex models. So I think it's among all things just really good practice with making models in particular. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the skip connection which was implemented in each ResNet block. So a ResNet architecture is made up of many ResNet blocks, each of which have a particular skip connection. And I'm going to dumb it down ever so slightly, and so we're not going to get exactly the ResNet architecture out of it, but we're going to get all of the really important details and make an actual model from it. In this video, I'm only going to cover making the classes for the ResNet block and for the model. I'm not going to show all of the data and model training code. If you want to see the code for that, check the video description, and there should be a CoLab notebook which has all of that. But let's get started. So we're going to start with some imports from tensorflow.kiras.models. We're going to grab both model and sequential because our ResNet model as a whole, which is made up of many blocks, is going to be a model. Uh, and in those blocks, there is going to be a place where it's useful to have a sequential. And then we'll just grab all the layers from tensorflow.kiras.models. Dot layers, we're just going to import star. Now we're going to start by making a block. And so a class resnet block is going to inherit from layer, which is implicitly uh, imported from that. So it inherits from layer. So we're basically making a custom TensorFlow layer. And we're going to make it a init function, underscore init has self and the parameters we're going to use to make one of these are going to be how many out channels we want so how many filters or how much depth that we want and this thing that we're going to have which is first stride by default it's equal to one now these resnet blocks as we'll see basically each have two convolutions in them it does a conv a batch norm and a relu a conv a batch norm and a relu so these resnet blocks essentially do an add with whatever it was taken as input and it's going to do two different convolutions with batch norm and relu and it's going to take the beginning thing that it got and add that to the result of all of it and we'll see that soon. We're going to use this first stride equals one because in the first convolution it's going to by default have a stride of one except sometimes there's actually times when we make these blocks when we use a stride of two and those are the times when we want to particularly do downsampling and so when we have a stride of one we're not going to do any downsampling so we'll do a padding is same and when we have a stride is two we are going to do downsampling and so we don't want the padding to be same. Anyways, that's probably confusing. It'll be better in code when we do it in a moment. We're going to call the super dot underscore init underscore method just to call its uh, basically the layers uh, class there. And then we'll do first padding by default is equal to same. Because as we just said, by default or with this default, the padding is going to be same. So we don't lose height and width. But if the first, if the first stride is not equal to one, as in it's equal to two, we're using a downsampling stride, then we actually want to do downsampling. And so we'll do first padding is equal to valid, which basically just says, let it do whatever it would naturally do, allow it to downsample. We'll see that again in a moment. Self.conv sequence. So basically just all of its convolution stuff is going to be a sequential model. And it is going to be made up of a convolution, so a conv2d, which ends or has however many out channels that you want. And it's going to be a 3 by 3 And the first stride is going to be, well, that's why we have that first stride. It's whatever we, when we're making a block, however much we want it to be. And the padding is going to be, again, whatever that first padding should be. If the stride is 1, well, then it should be same so that we don't lose information. Naturally, you'd lose information for doing a three by three. But if we're doing a stride of two, then we want first padding to go in here and say valid, allow it to downsample. And here, we will add a batch normalization and a ReLU function after that. Or that's the ReLU layer, but it just applies the ReLU function. Then after that, it's another convolution. And so in this one, we're still going to have out channels, and there's no reason to match out channels here exactly the same, but we might as well. And here we're going to do a 3x3 three three as well, with a stride of exactly 1 every single time, at a padding equal to same every single time as well. And then we will do a batch norm, batch normalization, and then a ReLU activation as well. 
So really the difference here is that we're going to do a padding same and a stride of one here. So we don't actually lose any information in this one, but here you can optionally lose information if we set it up that way that you wanted to. Uh, there's no reason for a comma there. We will do end our list and end our sequence there. Okay, and now in this layer, it's pretty much done, except this is the first time, at least in my videos, that I'm showing you how to use this call method, method of a custom layer. I should zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. If we do define call, this should actually look a lot like PyTorch, if you've seen this, itself, and inputs. And what it does is sets x equal to the self.con sequence of its inputs, and then if, here we have to add this because I'm simplifying it a little bit so that we never have to deal with the situation when we're adding with a, with a different height and width. Don't worry about that. If x.shape is equal equal to the inputs.shape, this is when we want to do our skip connection. And you do it here. You do x is equal to x plus its inputs. Okay, so the inputs is basically what you had before, your image, uh, your batch of images, or your batch of feature maps, whatever it would be. And you take that inputs, you keep track of that, and then you do x is your conf sequence as above. It'll be the same height and width. If the x dot shape is equal to the inputs dot shape, that means that we have the exact same height and width as the inputs, as the convolutions produced and therefore we would be able to do this x is equal to x plus inputs, which this is your skip connection basically. That's for your better gradient flow. And here you can just return x. So we're only gonna do this if the input shape matches the x shape, which is just after the convolutions. And that would only be the case, it would only be the case when we have the shapes is the same, when we don't lose any information. And so if your first stride is the default, which is one, that means the padding will be the same, and therefore you will have you will not have lost any information. But if you allow a different stride, that's when we say, actually, we're allowing you to lose information, the padding is valid, and therefore we are not going to do this down here. The x dot shape would be smaller, the height and width would be smaller than the inputs would, so we're not going to worry about that skip connection. Technically, in the uh, ResNet paper, they do have a way around that, and it's just a little bit more complicated, and that's the part where I'm going to dumb it down, but that's not really that important for understanding how to make these skip connections and the practice in TensorFlow. So we're going to just make for practice here, or seeing if it works, layer is a ResNet block of four. So we're passing the out channels as four. And we're going to just do the default stride. And so print layer should not really show anything interesting. Now we're ready to make our ResNet model, which is really just this model class here. It's going to be one of these, except it's going to be made up of multiple ResNet blocks and also other things as well if you want. And so we're going to make a class of a ResNet which inherits, inherits from model. And it's going to be define underscore init of self. And it's going to call the super of, you don't actually have to do this in Python, but this is what my code is, super resnet self. Yeah, I'm just saying you could admit this if you wanted to. Super resnet and self dot underscore init and like that. And its first convolution is not going to be a ResNet layer. It's just going to do a self.conv1 equal to the sequential of, it's going to do a conv2d of 64 filters. And it's going to be a 7x7 seven seven filter, really, really big, big height and width. And it's going to do a stride of 2. So it, basically the point of that is just to lose, uh, capture a little bit, but lose a lot of the information from the beginning because it's such a high resolution. After that, we will apply a ReLU. You could do a batch normalization there if you wanted to. And max pooling 2D after that of a three by two. So that loses a lot of information at the beginning, just makes life a little bit easier was the logic there. Now we're gonna do basically just a bunch of ResNet blocks. And so we'll do self.resnet chains just, I'm just calling it chains. It's just a bunch of different ResNet blocks in a row. And it's gonna be, well, a sequential of ResNet blocks. And so it's going to have a ResNet, ResNet block 
of 64 out channels. And because I'm using the default stride of one, it's going to have the same in uh, height width as whatever this max pooling thing produced. So we're not losing any information there. And we'll do another one, which is really exactly the same thing, but different parameters, ResNet block of 64. Now, since this ResNet block has a stride of one, we are forcing it to say, keep the height and width same as it was in the input. And so here we do do the skip connection. Whatever this was, you take that value and you add it to the result of this. That's where the skip connection comes into play. And here, we're also having a stride of one. And so this will have a skip connection. The resulting height and width of this will be the same as it was for this one. And again, same with the depth, same with the depth here, the depth has to match as well. And so you take the output of this, and then you add that to the output of this. And that is where that skip connection comes into play. However, here, it can't always come into play, at least not with our simplified model. And so we'll do a ResNet block where the output depth is 128, and it is a height and width of two. It's really hard to add this, the result of this, because we're losing information here. It's doing gonna do the padding equals valid, so it's gonna lose height and width here, and the depth is gonna go more, so it's really hard to add that to the result of this, and so we're not gonna do the skip connection here. That's why we have this shape thing here. That will be an example of when we do not do that skip connection. But here we can, ResNet block of 128. We're going to keep the same depth, we're going to keep the same height and width, and therefore the result of this is going to be added to this block here. And so we do do a skip connection there as well. And now here it's going to look pretty much the same. In fact, I'm going to start copying and pasting because you're just taking this here. We're going to not do the skip connection because we're going to look down sample here and ResNet block here 256. And we're going to add that to something very similar here, just 512 by two, and then ResNet block of 512. So here, every time here we're doing the skip connections, here we do it as well. Uh, but just when we're going from this to this, or this to this, that's when we're not gonna do the skip connections. Again, in the paper, they actually have a way around that, but we're not going to worry about it. We'll now just get our output to make this a real model, and you can make the output whatever you want. For us, we're going to do self.out is equal to the sequential, the sequential of just a global average pooling 2D. So average over the height and width of each square to get just 512. And then we'll convert that 512 to a dense one for us, we're just going to do an activation sigmoid. That's how I've been setting up these, is by doing a cats versus dog problem. You could make that something different. This is not what it would be for ImageNet. For ImageNet, it would be 1,000 and a or a 1,000 dimensional softmax. Here, I'll close that. And here, we're not quite done yet because we have to define how we want to call this stuff because this was not itself a sequential model. This was inheriting from model. And so again, you can do this call method, define call of self and x. And here you just set x to be the self.conv1. That's our first sequential here. Do our conv ReLU max pooling, optionally a batch norm. We'll do that of x. A x is equal to the self.resnet chain. So all of our resnet blocks. So all of our resnet blocks will be done there. And x is just equal to self.out of x. Sorry, I didn't realize this wasn't indented. That should be indented there. And actually these are indented too much, so that should be put back there. And then we should just do return x. And if we make one of these models, model will just make it equal to a default resnet. Here, we don't have any parameters here. You could definitely adjust parameters so that maybe you adjusted um, how much these blocks were or how many, you could do this even in a loop. So you could say how many blocks that you wanted, but here we're just gonna do default and we will do a print model. Sorry, here I just missed a colon, and so now it should work. And here, you don't actually see the model. And because of how complicated this model is, and in certain ways it was done, if you do model.summary, it is going to say it has not been built yet, and so you have to call it on a batch of data. If you try to do model.build, well, that still doesn't really do anything. You take the input shape, and so you have to do input shape is equal to say 224 by 224 by three. 
and now that you've done that, it is still incompatible with this, and you have to do the batch dimension as well. We'll just say a batch of one. And now finally, it is happy with that. And if you do a model.summary showing you how this model is made, it's not gonna really show you an awesome summary because of how it's built. But you can see here, eventually after the ResNet chains, you get it down to a five by five by 512. You do a global average pooling to get it down to uh, just 512. And then you convert that to a a single sigmoid function. And ours has 11 million parameters. Check the video description and I'll have a collab notebook where it allows you to set this up and train it as well. Uh, it will take pretty long, but 11 million parameters isn't that bad. It's a lot less than some of the other models. Um, and you could make a much bigger ResNet than this. You could do a lot more ResNet blocks. You could do bigger, uh, more amount of filters and you could do a lot of different things to this as well. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, drop a like on the video if it was and have a great day guys, bye-bye.